Today I want to take you along on a typical after Shabbat night in our Orthodox Jewish family. From the Avdalah ceremony with our Motzei Shabbat traditions to my after Shabbat prep routine with all the tips and tricks to help you have a Shavuot of, which means in Hebrew for you to have a great week. So come along and let's celebrate Avdalah and after Shabbat together. The girls get what we need to do Avdalah. They will get a multiple wicks Havdalah candle, something with a pleasant smell. Here we're using mint. We're also using a small container to receive the match and a plateau. The girls cover the plateau with a pre-cut aluminum foil as my husband will spill the wine on it later on. The first step in our Avdala celebration will be for my husband to fill up the cup of wine all the way to the rim and sometimes he will make sure that the wine in the Avdala cup will overflow as our sages say it brings abundance in our week to do so. He will start the Avdala ceremony with the first Avdala blessings to God. He will repeat these blessings three times. We make sure to include the children in the Avdala ceremony. So one child will light the Avdala candle and the other one will extinguish it. My husband will ask God to have all bad degrees against us annulled. And he will ask for God to bring us success in everything we do during our week. He will do the blessing on the wine and he will look into the cup of wine to look for his reflection. We all laugh so he should smile and see his smiling face in the reflection of the wine. A first sign for a good week for him. He will do the blessing on a pleasant fragrance. Here he is using mint. We do the blessing on a pleasant smell to ease the pain from the departure of the Shabbat Queen and of our extra soul that we had during Shabbat. My husband will do the blessing on the fire of the Avdala candle. We fold our thumb into our right hand and look at the reflection of the light on our nails to always remember us to strive to be a source of spiritual light in the world like we were at the time of creation. My husband will do the final blessing thanking God to have made a distinction between the mundane and the holy in our life. My husband will drink the Avdala wine, about half the cup, and he will spill the rest in the covered platter. Then we extinguish the Avdala candle. We then take the juice and put it on our eyes and on a specific place on our neck. We do Seuda Revi'i, or the fourth meal of Shabbat. Usually we do it with some cake and warm drink, and then I can tackle the house. But first, I have to change. My first step after Avdalah is to prepare my board that announces when is Shabbat next week. This comes from the dollar store and it is my way to make sure Shabbat is always on our mind all week long. I take apart the glass from the candlesticks and I'm going to put the wicks in a bag as we should not discard them simply in the garbage. We will double wrap them and then put them away. 
If you've been following me for a little while, you know that one of my favorite tricks to make the glass hold to the candlestick is to add pieces of silly putty that will secure your globe on top of your candlestick. Then I take out the lights and the candlesticks and put everything away. I know they will need a good polishing on Friday as well as our kiddish cup. I go to the kitchen and start by turning off all the appliances that I had left turned on before Shabbat. I take our immense tower of plates we use during Shabbat and I will let them soak in the sink for a few minutes in hot water with dish soap. I will clear off the dining room table from the Abdallah candle, spice, as well as to put back the challah board and challah cover. I will ask the girls to clean up their toys. As you can see, they had a lot of fun and there are toys everywhere. While they are tackling their mess, I will go back to the kitchen. I pre-rinse my dishes before putting them in the dishwasher like my mother does it. To be honest, I do it because I prefer to take the extra minute and for the dishes to be free of food residue than to run into the issue of having to rewash the dishes after they have been washed in the dishwasher and for the food to be fully encrusted in the dish and completely stuck on the plate. I don't know, do you do that too? <laughs> Maybe I'm the only one who does that? I would love to know, I think I need help for that. <laughs> Between each batch of dishes, I empty my sink catch-all and yeah, ew. <laughs> I will empty all the bowls and serving plates that are on the kitchen table. I start anew with the bowls and utensils and I let them soak for a few minutes in the sink. While they soak, I will empty my counters of aluminum pans, cooking bag from the rice of the cholent and everything else. I will take my time to clean thoroughly the hot plate. I will take away the appliances as they are now cooled down. I will turn off the Shabbat oven as well. I will empty the crock pot from the leftover sauce in a used Ziploc bag. I do that to avoid for the oil and gunk to block my sink. Maybe you know a better way to do this? I would love to know in the comments below because cleaning the crock pot is the part I dislike the most about cleaning after Shabbat. I load the dishwasher with the second batch of pre-soaked items. One thing I have learned is to separate the utensils right away in the utensils basket of the dishwasher. The knives with the knives, forks with forks. If you're wondering, I load the forks in the back to avoid scratching myself on them while I'm loading other stuff. I also put all the weekday utensils together, not to have to sort them from my Shabbat utensils. This way of loading my utensils allows me to just empty them by sections from my dishwasher basket to the cutlery drawer. Also, when I load the bowls, I load them from the front of the dishwasher to the back and unload them the other way. No more jam bowls. I add the rest of the dishes to the dishwasher. I finish loading the dishwasher with my Shabbat sponge as well as my oven mitts. I put the glasses in the sink and wash them one by one as they are not dishwasher safe. I leave them to dry for a few minutes on this silicone mat. I put the pots and pans in the sink and let them soak with dish soap in hot water for a few minutes. I go and clean the living room table with my Method anti back Cleaner. It is by far my favorite cleaner, but I am curious by nature and I always want to know if it, there's something better out there. What is your favorite soap cleaner? I'm always on the lookout for a new soap adventure. I broom the floors of the living room. I put on the weekday tablecloth. Then I finish cleaning the kitchen table. I put away the glasses. I clean the pots and by letting them soak in soapy water, everything comes out like a charm.
I let both crock pots soak overnight because cleaning them now would just take so much time and energy and I'm a strong believer that it is important to work smarter, not harder. So tomorrow morning, the residue will be all soft and easy to clean. I put away the pots and pans after drying them. I finally cleaned the counters and the oven top. I vacuumed my kitchen floor thoroughly because let me tell you, there's a lot of stuff going on on that floor. <laughs> I cleaned the floors with this amazing spin mop. It is from Valida in some part of the country and some other part of the country it's from O Cedar and it is by far the best mop ever. I use Pine Sol or Fabuloso to clean my floors. With this after Shabbat routine, within one hour or so, my house is clean and functional again. I can push my luck and clean the crock pot too tonight. But for me, I can easily deal with two crock pots to wash instead of a full house the next day. I hope you enjoyed this video all about how we celebrate Haftalah and our after Shabbat prep routine in our Orthodox Jewish family. I would love to know what do you do after Shabbat? Do you clean your house or leave it for the next day? If you are here until the end, thank you. And please write in the comments Shavua Tov or have a good week so I know I was not alone. If nobody told you today, you are loved and you are enough just the way you are. Until next time, stay safe, stay blessed, and don't forget to from it up.